What is up you guys? Glitches here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you my latest hunter build. Now before you guys go and get all excited, a uh, little disclaimer, it is nowhere near as overpowered as my previous one was. The latest Hallowed Halls patch unfortunately nerfed my previous build into the ground. They fixed the um, stun perk so our shroud arrows no longer stun enemies. And on top of that, almost all the enemies within the Hallowed Halls are actually resistant to shroud damage. So that particular ammo type is uh, pretty much useless in there. Um, I do, as you will see when I go over the build, still bring shroud arrows, but I pretty much only exclusively use those for the bandit camps and things like that when you're above ground doing normal runs. Um, but we do have some nice alternatives that I'll show off here. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the build. So right out of the gate. Good thing, uh, armor hasn't really changed much. For the helmet, I like to run the Eagle Eye Helmet. This will give us plus 15% uh, range critical strike chance and plus 13% critical strike damage. For the chest piece, I like to run the Paladin Chest and the Paladin Trousers to get us to that soft armor cap, but this will give us um, 240 flat health and 24 stamina. Moving on to the gloves, I run the Eagle Eye Gloves that will give us a uh, plus 12% range damage, which is obviously good because we're primarily going to be using the bow. For the pants, uh, again, Radiant trow uh, Paladin Trousers, that'll give us 2 health regen and 90 flat health. And then lastly, for the boots, I run the good old Deadeye Boots. This will give a uh, plus 3 stamina regeneration and a huge minus 700 stamina regeneration delay. So stamina should not be a problem with this build at all. The second it runs out, it almost instantly starts filling back up again. So a really good pair of boots, especially for hunter builds. Uh, moving on for the rings, this has changed a little bit. The new OP combo, in my opinion, devs. If you're watching this video, I know you are because you've nerfed every other thing that I built into the ground at this point. Uh, leave some stuff for us to have fun with. Uh, and right now that is double Gemini rings. This will give you plus 16% a life leech chance. And you combine this with a new consumable that we're going to be taking. And that can get upwards of plus 26% life leech within the hollow. So you have a ton of health regen with this build. You almost never run ahead of health. So really, really strong combo right now. <clears throat> now, like I mentioned in my warrior build, if you uh, are pretty good at dodging and have decent survivability and you feel like your life leech is a little too strong and a bit overkill, you can potentially swap this uh, Gemini ring, at least one of them, with something like the Ring of the Ancients. Um, that is another potential option you can go with. That'll give you a plus to your base stats for um, dexterity, uh, constitution for health, strength, things like that. Um, the other thing is, is the only reason that the life leech, in my opinion, is that good is because of the combo that we're using um, with the new consumable. And that consumable only works within the hollowed halls. So when you're outside of the hollowed halls, another option you can do instead of running double Gemini ring is one run one ring of the ancients and one health ring. Um, that will give you some bonus health and bonus health regeneration. So that uh, combo is another good combo to use when you're not inside the hollowed halls. Um, but for right now, I'm going to be demoing the Hallowed Halls. So this is a phenomenal combo uh, that you can use right now. Uh, shields, we won't really be using them. I'm running the Shield of Light. I should honestly probably throw in the Ethereal Plane right now um, just to have some bonus uh, Shroud resistance. Um, but this has 90 parry power and 17 block. It's the highest uh, powered shield in the game. Moving on to the bows, we have a few options that I want to go over. First and foremost, the highest damaging bow and arrow, even more so than the Wolf Snarl Longbow, which has a higher base power, is the Silver Shot Bow. And that is because all of the legendary uh, Hallowed Halls exclusive weapons come with a new perk called Sacred. And what that does is it gives a bonus 10% more damage against all the enemies within the hollow. Um, and this has two of them. So you're getting 20% bonus damage there, plus 12% uh, bonus damage from ice magic damage perks. It also has stamina leech on it, which is also good for hunters, obviously. We love stamina. Um, so a really, really strong bow for within the hollowed halls. Now, when you're outside the hollowed halls in like normal abandoned encampments above ground, um, those sacred perks won't work. So you're going to lose out on a ton of DPS. And in that situation, I would recommend bringing the ignited bow. This has the equivalent damage of the silver shot bow when you're not in the hollowed halls in the form of head seeker and multiple fire magic damage perks. 
Plus, it's also a fast draw speed bow, so has similar stats to the way the um, Silver Shot bow is built. So another really good option when you're outside the hollowed halls here. Honestly, I did the testing. Wolf Snarl Longbow is uh, nowhere near as good um, to the Silver Shot bow in the hollowed halls. So when I'm doing those runs, I don't even bring this. Uh, just keep this in your chest now. It's uh, not as good. Um, the only other bow that I do bring, um, and this is strictly just for emergency situations, is the Shadowbane bow. This is going to be our Health Leech bow. Um, we do get, within the Hollow Halls, a ton of base Life Leech as it is, so you may not even need to swap to this. But in an emergency situation, if you get caught out on accident, this bow does have Health Leech built into it. So it'll kind of guarantee that you get some more life back a little bit quicker. So that is another potential option that you can choose there. <clears throat> Moving on, the only other weapon I like to take is actually the Ignited Hammer. Um, it's full blunt damage and by far the strongest weapon, uh, two-handed weapon, and honestly, melee weapon in general right now. Um, it is exceptionally effective within the Hollowed Halls, though, because all, if not all, um, the majority of them, rather, uh, of the enemies within the Hollowed Halls are weak to blunt damage. So really, really strong, and I know you're looking at me like I'm crazy. Glitches, this is a hunter build. Why are you bringing a melee weapon? Uh, the main reason being is the hollow halls, unfortunately, are not built to be friendly for hunters. Um, it's a lot of narrow corridors, a lot of tightly packed large mobs that you have to go against. And if any of those mobs get in close quarters uh, quickly, like the dogs or those flaming green skull enemies, it can be really annoying to try and sit there and pick off them one by one and waste all your arrows, especially with those green skeleton enemies because they spawn like 20 at a time sometimes. So honestly, uh, we are taking some strength points in the tree to make this hammer viable. And uh, we'll pretty much exclusively be using it for the downward smash attack. Um, that one downward smash should be able to one-shot pretty much all of those green ghosts and even the weak uh, pure skeleton enemies with one hit. Um, so I recommend for at least those two enemy types, just break out your hammer, do a couple down smashes, clear them out quickly, and then whip out your bow to mop up the rest of the enemies. Um, you'll save a lot of ammunition in the long run, and you'll, your clears will just be a little bit faster. So highly recommend bringing that. And again, we will be taking some perks to make our melee damage as well as a consumable to make our melee damage a little bit better as well. Um, so it is still useful. Uh, moving on to the ammunition. I do still like to take the Shroud Arrows. Um, they are pretty much going to be useless within the Hallowed Halls, but when you're in normal bandit camps above ground, like I was mentioning before, um, they are still nice for uh, good AoE damage against multiple enemies. Um, we don't, unfortunately, get the stun anymore, but damage-wise, they still are pretty decent, so I like to take some of those. Uh, our main bread and butter arrow that we're going to be taking, though, uh, for damage within the hollowed halls is going to be the giant bone arrow now. This is a new ammo type that dropped with the patch, and it's actually super easy to craft. Um, and it's the only arrow type that is uh, considered a blunt damage type. And like I mentioned with the hammer, all of the enemies, um, majority of the enemies rather, are weak to blunt damage. So these are super effective against enemies. The only enemies, though, that aren't affected uh positively by blunt damage are the shroud based enemies so like the blue goblin one type creatures that have like the spears and stuff there is quite a few of those in some of the arenas that you go into um, and those are actually more prone or weak rather to piercing and cutting damage so that is why i bring along some iron arrows um, you can switch to these uh, to be a little bit more effective and you'll kill them a little bit quicker honestly from my testing your strength with the bow is pretty high and you can one to two shot almost every enemy anyway so you don't necessarily have to switch but the option will be there if you want to swap you can and they're just good for above ground against the majority of the enemies that aren't weak to blunt damage so take them all we're going to be using our uh, buffs to pickaxes to get the resources anyway so might as well bring them along and speaking of pickaxes let's move on to the tools I recommend bringing some pickaxes because the giant bone arrows, uh, the required material to craft these, are actually the green crystals that you can farm within the hollowed halls. So during your runs, I recommend taking a pickaxe or two and farming up a nice like 70 to 100 stack of those crystals. That way when your run is finished, you can come back and you'll have plenty enough materials to make several hundred more stacks of arrows to help you out in your next future runs. Um, so you won't have to worry about it. So definitely bring some pickaxes. 
pieces. The most important tool, however, that I recommend you bring is actually the Iron Axe. Um, I didn't realize this at first when I made my wizard build, but in the warrior and this build, I definitely want to bring it up. Um, this is basically going to be our respawn pillar killer, if you will. Um, all of those bone pillars that the skeletons spawn out of, um, magic spells, one two-handed weapons, the pickaxe, all of those tools and weapons and uh, abilities take multiple hits to take those pillars down. But for whatever reason, the iron axe can break them with just one swing. And this isn't just for the small ones. It also goes for the big one that you run into towards the end of the run that has even more health. Um, that can also be destroyed with one swing. So a perfect example would be like the very first boss arena in the tier four hall halls where you have the two respawn pillars right on the left and right hand side, right in the beginning of the arena. I just beeline it straight for the first one, one shot it, jump across the other side, one shot the second one and clear them out right away. Then you don't have to worry about any additional ads spawning for the rest of the fight. So a nice little strategy and a really helpful tool um, for a lot of different things, not just the bone pillars, but also breaking the bones that are blocking some of the hidden chest locations. Uh, it can one shot those as well. So a really good tool to bring there. Uh, moving on to consumables, um, obviously you're going to want to bring the highest level health potions that you can. I personally like to bring Wisps of Light. A lot of the areas within the Hollowed Halls are super dark, especially in the secret areas where they're hiding chests. So bringing this will light up the area a little bit more and make uh, your visibility a bit better. Um, for the last two slots, um, there wasn't anything in particular that uh, I needed, so I figured why not bring some stuff that can give us some extra passive damage. In this instance, I like to bring Fire with Summon Scrolls, as well as the new Greater Skull Summoning Vessels. This is a new throwable item that dropped with the new patch, and basically you chuck this on the ground, it explodes, and it creates one of those Necromancy Skull minions that follow you around. So a really good source of extra damage and... Uh, it's always good to have a little extra help during some of the fights. Um, but moving on, I also like to take the Greater Shroud Survival Flask. A lot of the areas within the Hallowed Halls are actually covered in Shroud, so more time that you have in there, the better. Um, pick up some Flask of the Fells for additional stamina. And lastly, I like to bring the Elixir Buffs. This will give you a nice 30% damage multiplier for 30 minutes. Um, so really, really strong uh, potion to use there. If you're low on them, there is multiple places that you can farm them that have guaranteed uh, positions. Um, the go-to one that I like to use is actually in the very starting area, right northwest of where you'd make your initial first base, and is in a little bandit encampment called Rookmore. Um, there's a northern gate and an eastern gate. I recommend throwing an altar down just outside of the eastern gate. Um, I'll probably show some footage here, um, but if you run in through the eastern gate, you can immediately turn left, and you'll see two tables, and on those two tables will be guaranteed elixir spawns, so you can pick up the two potions and then do the login, log out, gimmick to make them instantly respawn just run back in grab them again and keep doing that over and over until you get a nice little stack of them so that is a good place to farm up those uh, but moving back to the uh, other consumables um, the one that i don't have on my hot bar because it almost never drops is the uh, vakar scroll um, that in the 100 plus hours that I've played this game has never dropped the physical scroll version of it. Um, so the better alternative is to actually place an altar nearby where uh, one of the uh, blessing altars is uh, in the Vakaw camps. And uh, I can't stress it enough why the uh, Pillars of Creation is such a great spot to place an altar. And in my instance, I built my entire base there. Um, it's super up high, so it's really good for traveling. But it is also located near two really good spots for farming some really helpful items. The Research Camp is a great place to fly down to and farm those legendary Prayer of Flame Scrolls, which are good for wizard builds. But then just outside of the exit of the Research Camp Tunnel is a main uh, Vaka and encampment and in the dead center of that encampment there's going to be an altar where you can pick up that uh, strength blessing the vaca blessing um, instantly and that will last for 30 minutes it gives you plus 25 base health and plus 20 percent uh, melee damage so a really strong melee buff and since we're going to be using our hammer every now and again um, and we got our altar right nearby makes sense to just quickly fly down before doing a hollow halls run grab the buff really quick and you have a nice uh, little damage boost moving forward as well so i like to go and grab that 
Uh, moving on to the consumables that you can craft. Um, our main go-to, well, first off, as you can see, we have four of them. Uh, I will be taking the perk within the skill tree to allow us to have four food items, so that's why we have that. Um, but the main best one for hunters is going to be the stir-fried vegetables. That'll give plus five dexterity for 45 minutes, so a huge boost to our range damage. Um, next up is chicken soup. This will give plus four constitution for additional health, as well as another dexterity for range damage. Uh, moving on, I like to take the open sandwich. This will give us two constitution for more health and then plus four strength. This will help mitigate the fact that we're not going full on into the warrior tree and give us a little bit more strength to make our hammer a little bit more effective. And that also lasts for 45 minutes. And then last but not least, I like to take the excellent ectoplasm soup. This is a new consumable that dropped within the hollowed halls patch. Um, you get this from a new vendor. It'll have a minus 150 health uh, uh, debuff on it, which honestly isn't that big of a deal because this build is pretty tanky, believe it or not. Um, but it mainly gives the big bonus is it gives plus 15% damage against all enemies within the hollow and a 10% life leech chance against hollow bonus. So you combine this with our two Gemini rings, and that is how you get the 26% life leech chance. Um, and also, don't pay attention to this. This is actually a tooltip bug. A lot of you corrected me in my previous build, uh, build when I recommended the medium tier one. This is not one minute. It is actually one hour. So don't be afraid to pick this up if you have the materials, which you should, because it's actually super easy to craft. And I can go over and show you that now. So if you run over here, this is the new NPC that you're going to unlock. Um, once you unlock him, he's going to give you a quest to hunt down the materials required to craft the ectoplasm press. Once you have that, you'll notice that there's several recipes you can unlock for tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 uh, ectoplasm uh, um, key items. In this particular instance, you're going to want to craft the excellent one for the potion that we want. Once you make a bunch of them, go and talk to him a second time. And under the supply section, this is where he has the craftable soups. He's got a lower tier 1 which I don't really recommend for uh, minus 50 health with a 10% bonus damage and 8% life leech chance. A medium tier one that lasts 50 minutes, which is minus 100 health, 12% bonus damage and 9% life leech. And then obviously the big boy potion that I recommend with the minus 150 health, 15% damage bonus and 10% life leech. And this only takes a yucca fruits, which you can find super easily anywhere in the desert, as well as those ect uh, excellent ectoplasms that I just showed off. And the main requirement for these are the tier three crystals. And honestly, the enemies that drop these within the hollow halls, I've seen them drop like up to six or seven of them at a time. So you get tons of those crystals, believe it or not. And these are actually super easy to make. So you should have plenty of materials to craft all of this ectoplasm soups that you need so a really really strong uh, uh option to take for your fourth uh, food slot for the hollowed halls now if you're not in the hollowed halls obviously these two main perks aren't going to be worth it so i would swap this out with something a little bit more uh, effective like a sweet for example uh, a grilled yucca food for more regen um, that is another po uh, potential option, and we will have the sweets perk in the tree to make it 50% more effective, so that's another option, but you could do teas, you could do anything, uh, just to give you some more regen in some other areas. That is the fourth food option I would recommend when you're not inside the hollow halls. Um, so yeah, um, that is pretty much it for consumables. Next thing I guess I can do is go over the most important bit, which is our skills. Bunch of things have changed here. So in the survivor tree, um, I would recommend picking up the point in endurance followed by runner and double jump. This will give us a little bit more maneuverability. Uh, while we're here in the athlete tree, I also like to pick up the two points in strength as well as jump attack and jump attack two. This will help make the one ability that we're going to be using with our double hammer, uh, our mace rather, uh, a little bit more effective, that downward smash. Um, if it's the only attack with the weapon we're going to be using, might as well make it as strong as possible. That uh, jump attack two will make that 20% more effective um, when we do it after a double jump, which we usually do. Uh, but moving on, quick up, uh, pick up the quick point endurance followed by wanderlust. This will give us additional uh, stamina efficiency when running on roads, followed by good metabolism. We're not really worrying about orbs, but it does give us 20% bonus efficiency to our potions, which is nice. Next, pick up rebound to increase our base stamina regen by 50%, uh, followed by sweet tooth. This is what I mentioned earlier about the fourth food item. Uh, stamina regeneration of sweets is increased by 50%. So that's really good if you're using like grilled yucca fruit and things like that. 
Uh, moving on, pick up the quick point and dexterity. And then lastly, dessert stomach. This is the perk that allows you to take that fourth food item. So definitely a big, uh, important uh, skill to take there. Uh, moving on, I like to take the Quick Point Endurance and Beastmaster, and I'll go over an uh, alternative route uh, here in a minute about that as well, um, followed by the Point and Dexterity in the Ranger Tree, pick up Marksman and Sharpshooter for 30% bonus range damage, Counter batter, uh, Battery for 50% damage to ranged enemies, followed by Eagle's Bane for 30% bonus damage to flying enemies, uh, Skill Shot for 20% more damage if you hit them in the head, followed by Ranger to give uh, plus two to Endurance, Dexterity, 5 to Stamina Recharge, and 5% to Critical Chance and Critical Damage. This also works with our melee weapons, so not a full uh, loss there. It is definitely a nice perk to take. Um, lastly, pick up Multi-Shot. This is our go-to damage uh, uh, skill for our bow and arrows. Um, the giant bows do work with this. Um, so if you crit and proc a Multi-Shot at the same time, especially on like the Cyclops boss, you're doing like two to 3,000 damage in one pull. Um, so you'll just see huge chunks of health coming off the boss. Really, really strong. And then I also like to still take Beasting. It's good for those really fast-moving enemies like the dogs and those floating skulls. Um, they can just surround you really quick. So just being able to jump above them, get uh, out of dodge, and pick them off really quick is uh, a handy little skill to have um, to handle those fast-moving enemies. Uh, moving on to the Assassin's Tree. Pick up the point in dexterity, followed by airborne and updraft. This will obviously make our glider more efficient. Um, next, the quick point in endurance, followed by sniper. When attacking with a ranged weapon, your critical hit chances increase by 10%. Next, pick up blessed arrows. This is kind of a throwaway one because we don't care about mana, but we're getting it to allow us to grab the point in dexterity for more range damage. Then, pick up vitality surge. Dealing a critical strike with a ranged weapon restores 5 stamina. Stamina is always good on hunters, so might as well pick it up. And that also allows us to pick up another point in dexterity for bonus damage. Uh, rip, shell shock. I loved that perk, but unfortunately it doesn't work anymore. Uh, moving on. Well, it works for explosive arrows, but no one crafts with explosive arrows. Uh, moving on for core talents. I like to pick up the quick point in the uh, strength in the barbarian tree to allow us to snag mason and miner. Um, a lot of the resources, especially those crystals within the hollowed halls that we need to mine to craft our arrows, um, is uh, something that these two perks will be able to take advantage of. Um, more damage with our pickaxe and uh, the 10% chance to get additional resources will just mean that we're getting a lot more ammunition a little bit quicker. And then I also like to take well rested. Technically, if you're a Chad, you can swap this for something else that's worth a couple of points um, personally i like to take it um, just because if you die to something stupid like a gliding puzzle for example within the hollowed halls um, if you throw down a campfire at one of the checkpoints to try and get your well rested buff back the max you'll get is probably only like six to seven minutes but with this, you can get upwards of 12 to 15 minutes, um, depending on how much furniture is in there, which will pretty much last you the entire rest of the dungeon run. So you can get all of that stamina regen back and not have to worry about it running out. It's also good, in my opinion, for extended farming runs when you're above ground, just doing normal bandit camps. So uh, a lot of people like it. I like it. But to each his own, feel free to swap it out if you want. Moving on to our melee damage perks. Uh, in the warrior tree, the point in constitution is good for health. Warrior's Path, obviously, to get 10% increased melee damage, followed by the Quick Point and Strength and Brute, as well as Hammer Time, to make our Blunt Damage 30% more effective. That is the, pretty much the only perks we need, because we're only going to be using the Hammer. And then last but not least, for our Tankiness, um, or uh, Survivability, rather, the Quick Point and Constitution in the Tank Tree, followed by Shiny Plates and Heavy Plates for uh, better damage mitigation and better armor. Quick point in Constitution again for more health, followed by Tower and Warden. Warden will make us suffer 15% less magical damage as long as there's three or more enemies nearby, which is pretty much always the case because there's so many enemies that you run into at a time when you're doing the Hollowed Halls. And then same goes for Tower. This is pretty much the same, except it'll be 10% less physical damage. Um, lastly, pick up the two points in Strength, the point in Constitution, and then uh, round it out with Earth Aura. This is a big one. Um, it'll give you basically a flat... 10% damage reduction buff for not only yourself, but all of your friends and party members that might be playing with you within 10 meters. Um, and this is a flat reduction. It doesn't require anything to activate like blood rage where you got to get a kill, things like that. This will just always be active and just be giving you a 10% damage buff or damage reduction buff. So really good defensive perk to take. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much the build, the new setup, good rounded out, uh, combo for obviously our, uh, 
bow and arrows, but we do sprinkle in some strength for our melee weapon to make that still a little bit effective. Um, the one thing that I did want to bring up, as I mentioned earlier, is in the early to mid game, if you're not at the end game yet and you're kind of going through this guide and you want to build it step by step, um, you can potentially uh, swap the points that you would put into the warrior tree because really the warrior tree perks are only good if you can get all of them. Um, so if you don't have the ability to get them all early on in like the early to mid game, I would recommend actually investing in the Beastmaster tree and go up the right hand side. This will give you some additional poison uh, resistance as well as the Vaka language and Vaka culture buff, which will make those Vaka enemies that you'd be fighting in those mid tier zones um, a little bit less aggressive and a little bit easier to kill. And it will also unlock the ability to pick up two key dexterity points that we wouldn't otherwise be able to take because in the final build we're uh, putting those points into more important things. So this is a good alternative route to make your bows a little bit stronger in the early to mid game. But like I said, once you get to the end game, I would recommend respecking at your altar and then putting the points uh, and allocating them to how I have it set up here. Um, and as a reminder, I will obviously be putting the link in the description to the web UI for this build. So you guys can look at it as a reference and build it a little bit quicker. So make sure to uh, check that out when it uh, launches. Um, but yeah, that is the build. Uh, hope you guys like it. Only thing left to do is pop our consumables, check out our attributes, and then do the final combat demo. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll pop our vegetable soup. That's actually already active for my last run. Chicken soup, open sandwich. We'll throw on the ectoplasm uh, soup there. And why not? We'll throw on our uh, buff as well. Going into our character sheet. For basic stats, we are sitting at 15 constitution. 5 Spirit, 11 Endurance, 15 Strength, so we got a decent amount of Strength, uh, 18 Dexterity, so a ton of Range Damage, and 5 Intelligence. Uh, moving on to Damage, plus 68% Critical Damage, 10% Critical Chance for our base uh, stats. We also get 25% uh, Range Critical Strike Chance, um, as well as plus 21% Damage against Ranged Foes, and 15% against Hollow Foes, because of the Ectoplasm Soup that we're taking. Um, as well as 30% uh, bonus bow damage, um, which basically uh, culminates to plus 85% melee damage as a whole and plus 102% range damage. So really, really nice for our bows. You'll pretty much, like I said before, one to two shot everything that you're fighting, even within the tier four hollow halls, um, as you'll see when I do the demo. Um, lastly, for the protection, we're sitting at 258 physical resistance and 159 magical resistance. This does seem a little low, but magical enemies are pretty few and far between, honestly, and we can kill them pretty quickly. And uh, skills from the tree like Warden, for example, will mitigate uh, a decent chunk of that uh, magical damage as well. So this isn't as big of an issue as you would think. Um, so all around, uh, a nice balance build. Tons of range damage, um, but uh, yeah, that is that. Only thing left to do is to go over to the Hollowed Halls and test it out. It's not going to be as flashy as the previous build because we don't have any AoE or stuns or things like that, but I think it'll show off a good uh, um, uh, uh, demonstration of the power that you can get out of bow and arrows, um, even with just basic arrows. So let me jump over to there and I'll catch you guys here in a minute. All right, you guys, so we're at the entrance to the first hallway in the Tier 4 Hollowed Halls. Um, now, before I jump into the combat, quick little uh, side note that I forgot to mention is uh, when you're doing these runs and uh, not only killing the enemies, but using your pickaxe to get the green crystal resources, the other thing I recommend is breaking all of the pots that you can find and opening all of the sarcophaguses because there's a good chance that a lot of the uh, giant bone arrows that we're going to be using can drop in like stacks of like seven or eight at a time, sometimes even 10. Um, so if you uh, want to stock up on even more ammunition, um, that is a good uh, thing to do as well. So keep that in mind. Um, without any further ado, let's jump into the combat. Um, right out the gate, there's just a ton of those green skulls. So this is a good example of when we'd want to use our hammer. So let's go ahead and do that. Just one shot these guys. See, super effective against these. Over and done with and moving on. Switch right back to your bow. You'll see how easily we can kill stuff in here. 
The dogs are honestly going to be the most annoying thing. So, pretty much one shot all of these. No more flashy stuns, unfortunately. But you can see how effective the bone arrows are against uh, the skeletons. Um, these are the crystals, by the way, that uh, I recommend that you mine. So this is what you're looking for. Those ectoplasm fragments. That's what's going to be required to uh, craft those giant bone arrows. So make sure you grab some of those along the way. Won't do it now for the sake of the run, but that's what uh, you're looking for. Moving down here and kind of pull them all like I do in my other videos. You can just see the health gen that we get. If I can aim. Get those headshots, take them out even quicker. So definitely not as fast as a warrior or a mage, but it is really good against the bosses actually. That's the one uh, upside to the hunter. Throw a little uh, just a light up. Moving on. Probably won't do the full run, but I'll do the uh, the boss arena, this arena. In this spot, the uh, bugs are really annoying, so you can whip out your hammer for those if you want. Full health back, or just gained 1400 health from that slam. As soon as our health goes down, we just get huge chunks of it back. annoying see so look at that jumping health I specifically didn't use a potion because I wanted to show off how quickly you get your health back I guess I can show this off for those of you that don't know use your uh, iron axe to break this down quickly two swings Normally that'll take like six hits with anything else. Nice little uh, hidden chest down here. This can drop uh, legendaries if you're lucky. up to the first little gliding puzzle. Another little hidden area over here. Just fly right through the wall. Another potential drop uh, location there. Moving on to part two. Um, at this part, I like to take my axe out right away because this is the start of the uh, boss fight. 
and I just beeline it right for that first uh, respawn pillar. Boom, one shot that one, glide over, one shot this one, there. That quick, now we're done, don't have to worry about any additional adds. Now you can start picking off the enemies. This is all you gotta do. Kite around a little bit. Try and get headshots on the guy. On the big boy. See, look at that. There's eight, a full three hit combo, and it didn't even take down a third of our health. These guys got to go. Hoping for a little uh, life leech there. Might switch for our uh, life leech bow. Determined not to use a potion. There we go. Look at that. That's how fast and like a perfect example of when to use that bow. I'm playing terribly right now though, by the way. Easy peasy. Obviously, I was getting a little cocky there, trying to show off, so I lost way more health than I needed to, but it was a good chance to show off how good that uh, regeneration bow is in a pinch. Um, normally, I do way better than that, but uh, you can see that uh, it really isn't an issue to take those down. Could have done it much faster. Oh, I guess I could show this off as well. It's actually a uh, hidden room here. If you shoot uh, these two buttons, that'll open up this little middle door here. Give you another potential uh, legendary drop. Where are you running off to? And believe it or not, there's actually another hidden room all right across from it. You want to whip out your uh, pickaxe. I actually didn't see this one initially because it's so far back. And if you uh, pickaxe like straight ahead of you, you'll never run into it. So what you want to do is uh, keep going forward until you get past that little stone archway. And then start aiming upwards. And once you start aiming upwards, you'll notice that it'll eventually lead into a whole new room. Come on. There we go. And then here, we've got a normal wooden chest that should have uh, more of our skull summoning vessels. You can get ammunition from that. And then around the corner is going to be another silver chest. That has the potential to drop legendary hollow weapons as well. So a nice little uh, lootable spot there. Moving on. I think we had lost our uh, dexterity buff during that fight too, which is why we weren't doing as much damage. Just notice I had to re-consume re, uh, that. It was from my previous run. Another secret room right here. There's a ton of these rooms throughout uh, this area. Prime example of when a Wisp of Light will come in handy. Nice little potion. 
be sure to break all these normally to get uh, even more arrows potentially. Probably do this last little room here. There you go. Just keep back paddling, firing, keep trying to get headshots when you can. And you just mow them down. There's some iron arrows. More spells. Why not? We'll throw a couple of these out there. Have some fun. I always try and focus those annoying dogs first. You can even whip out your hammer if you wanted. go. Oh, I didn't realize there was still alive. <laughs> this guy's like, I don't want any part of that fight. <laughs> Lame. Uh, this is probably where I'll end it. See if I get lucky. There's a nice little uh, rare chest in this room. What about your pickaxe. One shot that. One shot that. And then mop them up. There we go. Definitely not as flatchy. Look at that. Legendary silver shot bow. And there you have it. Rest of the run would pretty much go uh, the same way. Easy peasy. I say we uh, head back to base for the recap. But yeah, super good survivability. Um, that boss fight was a perfect example of how quickly you can get your health back. Um, so, uh, definitely good option there. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it, you guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the new build. Um, if you do, be sure to smash that like button, comment down below. I appreciate all of you guys' feedback. And as always, uh, if you want to uh, join a group of like-minded gamers, check out the uh, links down in the description and join us on the Discord. Um, we've got hundreds of players in there that uh, are playing in Shrouded now, um, especially after my first wave of videos. So join up and uh, hopefully we see you guys around. Until the next one, hope everyone has a great day and we'll see you all later.